Um, speaking of unions, though, let's go right into. I know. I know we got to get back to the chat at some point. I have no idea. The chat could be completely in flames by <laughs> by this point. But I did want to mention people were talking about the ACLU uh, trying to destroy the Biden NLRB. So this is a really weird article. It's from NLRB Edge. I mean, it's a good article. It's a really weird story uh, by Matt Bruning. The ACLU is also trying to force more workers into mandatory arbitration. Huh. So this is a clash between the ACLU, American Civil Liberties Union, long known for fighting a lot of positive fights for civil liberties, and the NPEU, the Nonprofit Professional Employees Union. So here's the article. Earlier this week, the National Labor Relations Board, or NLRB, issued a two-page de decision denying the ACLU's request to appeal an administrative law judge's decision to not defer a dispute with one of its former employees to arbitration. Like most progressive organizations, the ACLU has historically supported access to the courts and opposed forcing workers and consumers into arbitration. Yet this case reveals that the ACLU has arbitration agreements with its employees and is doggedly trying to use those agreements to keep them from accessing the NLRB. So this is like somewhat reminiscent of uh, at TYT, one of the very first stories that I did way back in the day on, um, on Socialism for All was about how Jenk Uger was trying to break the TYT union that was forming. Like, you're so progressive, except when it lands in your lap, right? So it seems like another case of that. This is um, kind of a long article. We won't go through the whole thing today. But um, as they say, digging into the case reveals something even more surprising than run-of-the-mill hypocrisy from a progressive employer. In this proceeding, the ACLU is not merely attempting to have the case deferred to arbitration under existing board law. It is also trying to expand board law to force workers into arbitration in circumstances where they currently have a right to have their disputes heard by the NLRB or National Labor Relations Board. So, and then they go into what is arbitration deferral and etc. Um, but so the ACLU is in the course of fighting their union, potentially trying to wreck things for, or using a strategy that could wreck things for many workers. And so this goes into a broader thing that we're seeing right now. And as far as, you know, like we talked about that commenter before, asking why the resurgence in fascism, because they're alarmed at even this level of labor resurgence. And they also know what the capitalist class has planned. You know, 2008 was a massive ramping up of austerity, of, quote, shared sacrifice, where they try to make workers pay the cost of capitalism's losses as the system has harder and harder uh, times coming up with the profits that it needs, it is trying to just uh, externalize any costs that it can onto workers. And they know that this is only going to get worse, and so they're trying to just you know, tear down anything that stands in the way of that. And having union rights is one thing that does, although you know, it's like, as the saying goes... Um, <laughs> when unions are outlawed, only outlaws will have unions. This may not be the kind of thing that, uh, you know, because there were very intense labor struggles with very few rules prior to the NLRB. The NLRB helped to really systematize, in some ways co-opt uh, the class struggle and sort of bring it into a framework that was more copacetic, more aligned with capitalism, where uh, grievances that workers had could be resolved within the framework of capitalism. And so it necessarily kind of tamped down or gave workers an incentive not to pursue demands and conflicts that couldn't be resolved within the framework of capitalism. Well, so if you tear that down, I mean, it's, it's you know, maybe no holds barred, again, free for all, where workers will start doing stuff that is currently, uh, you know, illegal. But if that entire legal framework gets torn down, who knows what will happen anyway. This is an article from the Economic Policy Institute and from March 7th titled What's Behind What's Behind the Corporate Effort to Kneecap the National Labor Relations Board. SpaceX, Amazon, Trader Joe's, and Starbucks are trying to have the NLRB declared unconstitutional after collectively being charged with hundreds of violations of workers' organizing rights. So this isn't exactly the same type of thing, but the NLRB is 
as the labor struggle heats up again, and really just barely begun heating up again, um, the capitalist class is trying to really redefine what that struggle might look like. So here we go. You know, workers want unions now more than they have in a generation. Evidence suggests that more than 60 million non-union workers would like a union at their workplace. The National Labor Relations Board, NLRB, the agency established by Congress in 1935 to protect workers' organizing rights, or again, like, bring them more into a, a framework aligned with capitalism, is handling more union representation elections and unfair labor practice charges than they have in years. And again, if we get the kind of crash I'm expecting in the next few years, that is only likely to go up as workers realize more and more, hey, the system doesn't work for me, it's not stable, we need to protect ourselves. So how have companies responded to the surge in worker organizing? Some have honored their workers' choice and tried to start a positive labor management relationship, as Microsoft, New Flyer, Ben & Jerry's, and other companies have done. These companies see the value of a constructive relationship with their employees to their bottom line. So this is this kind of, you know, unions are good for uh, profits kind of thing. This is, um, I mean, I, I don't know what to say, but not if you're doing your union correctly, in other words. I mean, once the struggle starts heating up, I think you're going to see them changing their tune. For now, the unions are not terribly threatening, but as the crisis heats up again, you know, we'll see. Um, others have taken the opposite tack to the extreme. Led by Elon Musk's SpaceX and joined by Amazon, Trader Joe's, and Starbucks, these companies are engaged in a legal battle trying to have the NLRB declared unconstitutional by resurfacing long-rejected constitutional arguments about the agency's structure. If they succeed, it would kneecap the agency and its operations at the very time that workers need it the most. So time out. Is that really what workers need? No, not unless you're trying to do just exclusively reformist, like, you know, give me another bowl of gruel type stuff. What unions need to be doing is pairing themselves with revolutionary anti-capitalist political struggles and, and in fact generating some of the leaders of those struggles. What the NLRB is actually going to do in the long term is hold you back. What the NLRB has been useful, useful for for now in the context of an overall weak labor struggle and weak labor movement is, you know, if you're trying to do uh, a union campaign, which you have the legal right to do in your workplace and your employer fires you for doing that, you can appeal to the NLRB that, hey, that's an unfair labor practice and you might get back pay restored and things like that. So the thing is, though, and we've covered this in some of like the IWW organizing manuals that we have posted on the channel. If you want to find out how to organize a labor union, we have several. We have a playlist about that and, and several organizing manuals that will walk you through some of the specifics of that. The thing is, you don't need the NLRB to assert those rights if you have sufficient shop floor strength. In other words, what we really are trying to build here is the solidarity, militancy, and strength of the organized working class. The NLRB doesn't really directly play into that, but it can be helpful to workers in the context of an overall weak labor struggle. As we get stronger, it's just going to be a hindrance. We may or may not really be at that point yet, but long term, that is eventually what will happen. So workers who are very dismayed by this news, fear not, because where we're going, we don't need the NLRB. You know, it's it's a matter of uh, if you can win what you want just through the sheer force of your, you know, I mean, some people often think of striking, but striking like an actual walkout is kind of a last resort. There's many other kinds of industrial actions that you can do, like slowdowns, like there's all kinds of things um, that can put pressure on the boss short of an actual workout or like a walkout or work stoppage. And building your strength on the shop floor, it's all about uh, switching the balance of power away from the bosses toward the workers. The more you're able to successfully do that through the sheer force of your organizing, and of course the company will respond with various kinds of tyranny, which in the short term will be unfair labor practices and they're not legally allowed to do it. Um, but long term, you're trying to build workers' strength 
And when you have enough of that, you really don't need the government uh, coming down on the employer for you. You can do it much more effectively. And in fact, at that point, it cuts both ways. Unfair labor practices can be used against the union as well, just as they can against the employer. So the employer will then go crying to the NLRB and say, they did an unfair labor practice, help us. And the NLRB is bound to do that. It's part of their duties. So as this, you know, we'll keep an eye on this as this continues to heat up and as companies continue to attack the NLRB and try to knock it out of the way, um, obviously they'll try to retain whatever privileges they can for themselves out of the deal. But, you know, just capitalist private property rights in the general capitalist court system is already significantly biased in their favor in the first place. So whether or not they need to hold on to this specific agency uh, may or may not be the case.